Good morning. Good morning, and welcome those who are watching online and those who are with us here in Gethsemane Church, Keyport. Um, we are in the Easter season. It is a season. Not a lot of people kind of register that, um, but it, it's, um, well, actually the season for us goes a whole 50 days until the day of Pentecost. Um, some traditions count it as 40 days, some days of the Ascension. Um, but we, we are still celebrating the risen Lord today. But actually, today we get a story about God's Spirit um, working through Peter and John um, as they're going into the temple. So after Jesus has ascended. Um, praying um, for the young people who received <coughs> their first communion today. Praying for Grace Lutheran Church in Phillipsburg. Um, Let's see. Lots of announcements. Um, once again, we have a team walking in the cystic fibrosis walk in Point Pleasant. Um, my email, I did put a link up there, but if you search cystic fibrosis, um, they use the word strides, but it's not great strides or something. Anyway, go to cystic fibrosis, look for their walks, type in Point Pleasant, type Gethsemane, you, you'll find, I practiced it, it works. Um, if you want to donate or walk. Um, the first fruits where we supported charity, we're now um, doing an agency that helps people in Haiti, and um, there's a sheet in the back with details about that. Um, Mother's Day is coming up. Once again, we're gonna um, donate um, in honor of mom to Church World Service, um, and so there are envelopes in the back to do that. Um, just looking ahead two months, um, the second Sunday in June, we're going to have a celebration day worship where everybody's going to worship. There's going to be one service at 915 with a breakfast afterwards. Uh, the purpose of this uh, is it became apparent um, when, our, when our longtime member, John Crawford, passed away. Everybody at this service knew who he was and no one else did. And it was pretty remarkable because John never missed a service. But... Um, so the idea is for people at other services to know each other. That's the intention of this. Uh, so I'm giving you two months warning. Heads up. Whatever the word is. Warning. <laughs> um, okay. Um, we have had a team um, serving once a month at the Bayshore Lunch Program for, I don't know, several years. And Volunteer Appreciation Month, they gave us a certificate suitable for framing. They even gave us a frame. Ooh, wow. Okay. Uh, those of you who donate to that, I appreciate it. It costs us about 70 to 80 every month, and there's always, whoever donates to that, we always, you know, it comes out of the donations, um, and of course the volunteers who are there, so. Um, all right, let's take a moment of quiet. Please rise as you are able and join me for the confession that's in the yellow bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. To you, O oh God, our hearts are open, to you all desires know. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you all. Peace, everybody.
Our first hymn is 719. Yes, we are going to sing verses 1 and 6. 1 and 6. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Lord, your followers gave to your children something more powerful and more valuable than riches. <coughs> They gave healing and hope. Bring healing and hope into our world and show us evidence of your presence in our lives. Amen. Um, please be seated for the reading. The first lesson is taken from Acts the third chapter beginning at the first verse. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the beautiful gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. And they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and the disciples had crossed over the lake, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. 
and wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise um, you may be seated. Preaching every week isn't an easy task, but I've been doing it long enough that usually I can I can get into the mood pretty easily. Um, had a real hard time um, getting in the mood to preach this week um, with lesson on on healing. When when on Monday one of my longtime friends um, passed away, and while we knew um, his illness was terminal, it really was sudden that it happened on that day. Um, so it was very hard. Um, you know, to, to, um, to deal with this passage. Um, but deal with it, I must. So I was reading it over and over and, and trying to come up with something. And, and scriptures, interesting thing about scripture is you can read scripture over and over and all of a sudden one day you notice something you didn't notice before. Or you notice something that's always been there, but it strikes you on a particular day. Um, that's what happened to me. What's happening in the stories, it's, it's probably within, a, it might even be a matter of weeks or months, but it's soon after Jesus died. Maybe it's, he died, Rose ascended. Um, and so uh, Peter and John are in Jerusalem. That's where they stayed until they were being driven out. Um, and they're in Jerusalem, and they're going to the temple. Remember, they're Jews. Um, they're practicing the Jewish practices. They believe the Jewish was a fulfillment, uh, Jesus was a fulfillment of Jewish promises. They're doing all the regular Jewish ritual things still. And so they go into a temple to pray. And they go into the temple. And at the gate, there's a man who was born lame who begs. This is the established social security system of the time. Okay? Um, this man has never been able to work because he, we are told he's born lame. But he does have friends who carry him to the gate and take him home from the gate every day. And he asks for money. So Peter and John are walking by, and, and they don't have money. And, but they see him. Uh, there we go. Uh, well, he sees them. I'm sorry. When he saw Peter and John, he asked them for alms. They turn and say, look at us. And he fixed his attention at them, and Peter goes, I have neither silver or gold. And what struck me this week is what he didn't have, silver or gold. Because I was focused on, as I was trying to do this sermon, and kind of mad at the lesson, really, about well, why he get healed, my friend didn't. Um, and, and, and by the way, I think everybody has ever thought this, so I'm not claiming to be special on this line of thought. Uh, but um, maybe I'm the only one that ever thought it. I don't know. But anyway, uh, you know, I was focusing on what I didn't have. I was focusing on my loss. But what's important here is not what Peter and John don't have. Right? Peter says, I don't have silver or gold. But what I do have, I give you. Whatever he's got, he gives them. And then he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he does. And not only does he walk, we're told he leaps. I'm thinking, didn't he have to go to physical therapy? But, you know, I guess if Jesus is going to heal you, you're, you know, you're going to get good. You don't need physical therapy. So, um, but he, when he leaps... And he's praising God. There's a lot of things in this world I don't have. But I live in a society where I really don't want anything I need. Lots of people in this society do want. But my position in this society, I don't. Um, and, and so when I can't get something, I, I, you know, it's hard. And certainly when you, when you lose um, either a physical ability or a relationship, whether from death or broken up, you know, that's difficult. Um, but this passage stopped me and reminded me to look at what I do have. 
And, and I think that's important because I think for a lot of us in the midst of this society, we always focus on what we don't have. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough money for this. We don't have enough energy, whatever it is, to deal with that. And certainly in this day and age in the church, that's often the mindset. I hear that over and over. We can't afford a full-time pastor. We can't, you know, we can't do this. We don't have the volunteers we used to have. You know, you know you're all going, right. No. <laughs> But, but we can lose sight of what we do have. These apostles didn't have anything. They have left their whole, their whole livelihood and everything to follow Jesus, and he's gone. But Jesus did give them the Holy Spirit. When I introduced Acts last week, I said, we're going to see this spirit that Jesus was using in this ministry being given to the disciples. Actually, our gospel lesson um, points to what Jesus was doing in his ministry, which is healing, to remind us that now the disciples have this power from Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we as followers of Jesus today need to remember that. We still have that. Yes, we don't have everything we want. But we have the power of Jesus. We have the strength of Jesus. And that's enough. And when one holds on to that power and trusts that power, one can experience God's presence in life and things you never imagined. Now, God's going to work no matter what, whether we acknowledge that or not. But by acknowledging and seeing it, we can see how God is working in our lives. And so here we are today, over 2,000 years after this story happened. And yet God is still working through God's fall. God is still working through us to give us power and strength. I invite you today and always to look at what you do have. And remember, like Peter and John, it is not ours to hold. It is ours to share with the world, just as the living Jesus shared his healing and power with everywhere he went. That power is still with us and for the whole world, now and always, to bring hope and healing to all people now and forever. Amen. I invite you to rise and sing hymn 789, and we're going to sing verses 1 and 4, first and last verse. Oh. our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for everyone according, according to their needs. Almighty God, it is easy to get caught up in the difficulties and the strifes of this life. Help us to know that in the midst of our inabilities, whatever is keeping us down, that you give us all that we need and you are with us in all things. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, help us to see in our lives that with your power, not only can we be sustained and supported, we can share that love with all. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayer. Lord, we particularly pray for your followers wherever they are, that they might be bold in their witness. And today we pray for Grace and Phillipsburg. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayer. And Lord, we pray for all of those who are sick and in need. We especially pray for Charles, Jane, Norman, Renee, Jake, Andy, Harriet, Eric, Don, Rick Sims, and Eric's King. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, we do pray for all of the young people in the world that you would be with them and watch over. And we pray for those in this congregation who will receive their first communion today. We ask that you be with them and their families. We especially pray for Leah, Jacqueline, Colton, Sophie, Emily, and Brooke. Lord, in your mercy. Lord. And Lord, we remember all who have died and rest in you. We particularly thank you for the life of Bobby Hamilton and Charles Barnhart, Jr. Lord, in your mercy. Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, mercy now and always. Amen. Amen. Um, you may be seated um, as we continue. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all the creatures, angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim us to your will. He is your word inseparable from you, through whom you created all things, in whom you take the light. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He took there on our nature and our lot and shone forth in your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people, stretched out his hands in suffering, in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who, handed over to death, he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell and foot, and to give life to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show the resurrection, taking bread and giving thanks, said to you, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, Take a drink. This cup is a new cup in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance. Remembering here that his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church, gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom all glory and honor are yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of bread. Come and eat at God's table. Um, so for those who are communion in the pew, we're going to do that right now. The body of Christ given for you.
Please rise if you are able. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the God of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, go in peace, rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.